Great, thank you. Welcome everybody to the April 12th, is that what it is? Yes, meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. We were to meet a couple of weeks ago and we had an agenda issue, so we're not able to meet at that uh, time. So uh, welcome everybody. As always, we start with uh, general public comment. Uh, we are not as, I don't know what the word is, blessed, fortunate, uh, as East Hampton School Committee, who had a thousand people at their meeting on Monday night. I don't think we have quite quite as many people here tonight for that. But is there anyone that would like to speak about the CPC in a general way? Any of, uh, I'm seeing Deidre and Claudia just listening in. Yeah, just listening in. Okay. Uh, Deidre? Any comments? Maybe just... Uh, no. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, uh, we have a few minutes to approve uh, from our last round in the fall, the October 19th uh, uh, minutes, the November 2nd minutes, and the November 16th minutes. So let's take those. Sarah, can we do them all together? Do we have to have a, a motion? Can we do a motion to approve all? Yeah, you can do them as a package. Okay, so let's do that. So we can only have one one roll call vote if that's okay with folks. Um, is there a motion to approve minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. A second. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion on uh, October nineteenth, November second, or November sixteenth? minutes. Good to go. All right. So roll call on those. Jonah? Uh, yes. Jeff? Yes. Jen? Yes. Chris? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Brian? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, chair's report. Uh, just a couple of things. One is uh, perhaps most importantly, a thank you to Jeff, Jeff Dawson. Whatever fellowship or scholarship she had. So, Jeff, thank you. We appreciate your service. Um, and uh, can people hear me? Yes? No. You were frozen, Brian, for a minute or so. So we didn't, okay. a lot of what you just said was cut off. Okay. Um, well, just to reiterate, how, how about this? Am I okay now? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I did say my internet was frozen. Um, so this it was a big thank you to Jeff for filling in so capably as Julia was gallivanting around on her Guggenheim or fellowship, whatever uh, prestigious uh, thing she has going for her in, I believe, Eastern Europe. So thank you, Jeff. We appreciate it. You're back onto the rec committee, right? Doing good work on that yep. committee. That's right. Thank you. And anything you have for us, any projects, please make sure to move them forward. Um, let me see. Second thing is, for those of you not paying attention, on, can I hold this up so people can see maybe? This is the uh, page one of the April 1st, 2023 Boston Globe. And it was not an April Fool's thing, but there it is, the barn raising on the front cover in Northampton, the framework for community. So we're above the fold on the cover of the Boston Globe and it's the, the barn raising uh, for historic Northampton, which is really exciting but, um, that the publicity is so good and the, and the community event. And uh, that if you didn't read the article, the woman, um, I believe Alicia Spence, uh, uh, really did, did, this, did this right and involved community people in so many ways. It was, it's really exciting to, to, to see that. Uh, the other thing of note on the front page of the Gazette today is the 229 acres. Do I have that right, Sarah? Uh, 
229 acres, which is a Pomeroy parcel, which has now gone through and is in the public domain, um, thanks in part to us with the 300,000 that the CPC recommended uh, last, um, last round. It is the largest land purchase in years uh, and Sarah was quoted a number of times in the article. So it's nice to, see. and again, Community Preservation Committee acknowledged just like in the, in the Boston Globe article. So it's sort of fun, fun to see that. So congratulations. And speaking of congratulations, I don't know if folks, uh, we're aware of this, but when you look at Sarah's title now, it is the assistant director of the Office of Planning and Sustainability. So she holds the same um, position as Carolyn Lish did. Uh, so, and I don't think we acknowledged that last last um, session when Sarah was promoted to that position. So, congratulations, Sarah! Thank you so much for all of the good work that you do. Yay. Um, and I don't know if Sarah, uh, Sarah, if you shared this with everyone, but Alan Seawold, the city solicitor, got back to Sarah and she passed it on. I don't know if you pass it on to everyone, but the city solicitor, after looking at the, uh, the funding requirements for CPC and the funding for rehabilitation of historic uh, structures, saw no reason not uh, to allow us to recommend funding for the Forbes Library bathroom uh, upgrades and renovation, given the given some of the code issues there. So that's a that's a good thing um, that we we can, if we see as we see saw fit, uh, recommend funding that in City Council. Uh, that will that will go to 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 City Council. We funded were uh, we funded fourteen. I've recommended three other projects this round, totaling two and a half million dollars for these last two rounds. Um, that's the most we've ever done without bonding. So that's that's exciting. And a lot of projects go forward these last these last two rounds. Uh, Sarah, do you have any updates on current projects that are in the works? I don't know. I have. Uh, I don't really know what might be coming down the pike. And a lot of people do take some time to develop projects over the summer. So I'm sure I'll be hearing more, but not at this point. How about projects currently in the works and things that are going on? Any updates on those? Things that are going on. The, I know the DAR house is ready to get going any day now. Um, they they had a contractor lined up, lined up and are ready to go. Um, what the about the bike, the bike path wall retaining wall? That is under construction at the moment. I don't know if anyone has noticed if you travel the path frequently, but there's a daytime detour there. Uh, so that's currently underway. Um, should be done within the next month or so. I'm just going through recent projects. Um, community Music Center is lining things up. Um, was there. The Holly Street project should be moving forward, certainly this construction season. Um, and Habitat for Humanity will be moving forward this construction season as well on Birdsburg Road. So lots of stuff going on this summer. That's very exciting. Uh, any questions for Sarah about projects past or future? No? Good to go? Okay, so the main thing we have in front of us is to approve the council orders for the three projects that we recommended funding for, the uh, Historic North Camp and the co uh, Collections Preservation, Bathroom Ventilation at Forbes, and the continued around two of the emergency repairs at Smith Charities. So let's take these one at a time if we can. And the first is the Forbes Library project. If uh, Sarah sent out I think a couple emails, uh, one of which had the council the council orders in, we have no con no specific conditions attached uh, to this. Um, so before we have a motion, any 
Any conditions that people want to add? Any additions or questions for Sarah about this? The Forbes Library City Council order? Everybody's good with this? Yes? Uh, okay, Sarah, uh, can, can, sh should we do these one at a time or can we take all three at once for a roll call vote? We could do all three at once for these as well. Okay. And so no more discussion on the on the library. Could we go on that? Uh, number two is bathroom ventilation at Forbes. Uh, and again, it, maybe just to be clear, I could uh, give me 30 seconds to read what Alan Seawall, the city solicitor said, just, just so we have that down. This is his quote in the email that he sent to Sarah. I look for cases or other guidance interpreting CPA funding for rehabilitation of historic structures for non-mandatory cold upgrades. I did not find any case or other guidance on that specific issue. My interpretation of the statute would allow funding the proposed restroom upgrades at Forbes Library to the extent that it would bring those facilities into code compliance. I understand there is no administrative requirement that the bathrooms be upgraded at this time, but nothing in the definition of rehabilitation requires that code upgrades be mandatory. Without knowing which code controls restroom ventilation, I can't comment on whether in fact those facilities are out of compliance or whether the proposed upgrades would remedy that non-compliance. So that's what um, our city solicitor said to, to, uh, to Sarah, but it seems like uh, we're pretty clear that they are out of compliance with what the current code regulations are. And in fact, what they were when the last um, renovations were done in 1990 something. Is that, is that correct, Sarah? Yeah, that, that was my understanding. Okay. And any comments about that, that, that people have? Any questions? Um, looking at the council order, there is we have no uh, conditions uh, that go with uh, go with the Ford's library recommendation to city council. Um, any questions or comments on these recommendations, Chris? Uh um, sorry. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say that um, I'm not sure what I was expecting from Alan, and I think that that gives us um, what we were looking for, which is permission to to um, to to recommend funding for the work here. Um, I think I what I would like to say is that um, uh, I don't consider this to be uh, sort of a blanket um, approval of this type of code work. Uh, for potential future grants um, uh, in uh, uh, because I think the way he phrased it, you know, lack of understanding about code requirements and whether this was in compliance or not uh, really isn't a sort of a definitive statement um, about that. And um, I don't I really don't think that code compliance, even in historic buildings, is, is our primary our primary function. Um, so I just want to be clear that uh, um, should we get a similar request in the future, uh, that's a standalone, but not part of another piece of work going on in a historic structure, uh, I would want to seek a, a, um, uh, another opinion specific to that project to make sure that we were operating with, within our, our proper framework. Thank you, Chris. Duly, duly noted. Sir, did we ever hear back from uh, uh, Stuart Saginaw? Is that I, it? I, I did eventually. He asked if I needed anything else, but I didn't need anything else at that point because I had Alan's opinion. Okay. So we never got, got feedback. From yeah, I, and I don't know that this has come up at the state level before where a, a, a historic building is seeking to do one particular project to comply with one particular piece of code. You know, and Forbes had a very good reason for doing that, you know, for the enjoyment of the building and 
it is an appropriate project and does meet the secretary's standards, but it, it's not a, a type of project that comes up very much. Any other comments on these or conditions for these council orders? No, good to go. Uh, okay, so last but not least is the council orders for Smith Charities. And before we do that, um, Sarah sent a updated uh, letter that that we are sent out to them. Uh, my name is on the letter, but I can't take any credit uh, for writing it. Um, I would take all positive feedback, though, but all negative stuff has to go to Sarah <laughs> because she, she's the one that actually wrote it. But as chair of the committee, it's so fun to, to see well-written stuff with my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, so I'll take full responsibility if it goes over well. Any, and I know Martha, you had uh, feedback that went, that got incorporated into this, is that correct? And you're good with um, it? It did. I, I still, I'm still struggling with this a little bit um, because I'm not clear what we're asking for with the organizational assessment and then the capital plan. You know, I, I'm thinking, in my feeling about those is sort of those are one in the same, or they should be one, um, you know, one ass assessment planning effort um, because you're really looking at, what we're really concerned about is how they're gonna pay for repairs on this building over the long term. And so I, I, I think that's my memory of all the discussion that we've had. And I, and I agree with that, um, that we don't wanna to continue to be pouring money into this if they can't, uh, they don't have a long-term plan for sustaining themselves. So it seems to me that's sort of one and the same. And I, so to me, the gist of it was that we wanted to see what their long-term plan, the capital plan was. And then, you know, there are gonna be organizational issues that come in, that are gonna have to be addressed as part of that. And then the public and out, public outreach and accessibility. To me, those felt like one and the same. Yeah. And I tried to capture everything that the CPC had discussed at the previous meeting, um, just for mm -hmm. discussion purposes, but you know, don't be shy about editing this if it doesn't accurately reflect the, reflect the discussion. The organizational assessment was something uh, in particular that Jana had mentioned. Unfortunately, she's not here to clarify, uh, but I, I was, uh, guessing a little bit of what she was hoping to convey with that. Yeah, because we're saying here um, under the organizational assessment um, that it could involve the assessment of the structure of the organization, particularly related to its location and evaluation of staff and board and a capability of obtaining funding and overseeing building projects, which are really part of the the capital plan. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I think it, you know it, it would work the way it is, but I just um, I'd like to see you know ba basically both of those items addressed under one roof, no pun intended, one plan, because I do think they are related, very closely related. So. Um, yeah. Other comments that folks have? Um, Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, so I. Oh, Chris, you're mute. Sorry. You are yep. There we go. I think now I'm on. My, Martha, I hear what you're saying. Um, I actually my for me, the. Um, the important component was the part covered under the capital plan. And I thought that that, generally speaking, that answered I, would provide the kind of uh, uh, guidance for us that um, I was hoping to see. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Do we want yeah, to Chris, just I, delete yeah, the, the piece about the organizational assessment and leave it at capital plan? I, I mean, I, I, I'd like to hear Martha again, but for me, what I what I was getting out of that when I when I read it was sort of um, and and I wish 
so I guess I, I want to circle back and say, um, can we approve the um, can we approve the the um, the council order uh, and still be working on this if 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 that's if we feel that's appropriate uh, or do or do my colleagues feel that the two that we have to have this nailed down before we make a recommendation on the on uh, on on the council order um because i i i don't I, you know i don't want to be i don't want to be putting words in Gianna's mouth um on the organizational yeah. assessment mm -hmm. I, I would i think we could look at the um the council orders and i had a suggestion about that that might help clarify the letter sure. let me pull that up okay um Sarah, one incredibly minor thing at the end of the capital plan section, uh, the then alternatives should be explored. There's a period, there should be a period there rather than a comma. Du duly noted. Um, Martha? Okay, so going moving to the council orders, um, I thought the first three were good. And the fourth one also was good. Um, I didn't know whether we wanted to add either a fifth whereas or or augment the fourth whereas um, to include something like this. I'll just read you what I wrote in my notes here. Whereas the charities agrees to pursue a strategic plan for establishing and securing funds for long-term capital needs. Cool. That sounds to me like a separate whereas, yep. and not to be included in the in the uh, outreach or public awareness. Mm -hmm. Can you just read that again, Martha? Sure. Uh, whereas the charities agrees to pursue a strategic plan. We're establishing and securing funds. for long-term capital needs. Great, thank you so much, Martha. Mm -hmm. um, so any other conditions or whereas's that people would like to see on the council order recommendations? Um, Let's go back then to the to the letter. Uh, I think it, it seems like we, maybe we're in agreement that the, that the two can be separated. We could approve council orders um, and hold back on this letter until even the fall, I suppose, when Jan is back with us. Uh, I think this is something that we can't do by email, right, Sarah? Is that in violation of open meeting? Yeah, we, we can't edit over time by email. Uh, Okay. You know, because this is something that's intended to convey work that should be occurring prior to um, a subsequent grant, waiting until the fall doesn't seem like it would be an issue. I mean, I, I think Smith Charities clearly heard those messages um, and are starting to think about them already. But the, the formal letter need not be sent at the same time as the council order. Are people good with that, putting this off till the, till the fall? Is that a yes? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. And I would also add that I think by ins inserting this language in the um, the orders for this current grant, um, you know, that may do the trick. Or, you know, maybe it, by sending a letter, Brian, in the fall, you could reinforce what we had said in the council orders and maybe refer back to it. Let me remind you that, you know, we gave you this grant and we want to see this if you're going to continue to come to us. So no. Well, that's a great recommendation, Martha. Thank you. Um, sure. Any other comments on uh, whereas's or conditions for the Smith Charities? And we'll hold off and and revisit the um, the letter in the fall. Maybe that's one of the first things we can do with that. 
when the fall round uh, comes. Uh, so we have three council orders. Is there a motion to uh, pass on or recommend the all, all three of these council orders? Uh, can someone make that motion? Uh, I make a motion to approve. Thank you. A second? I'll second. Great. Sarah? All right. So roll call vote on that. Jonah? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Jen? Yes. Chris? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Okay, unanimous. All right. So that is 17 recommendations that we have. So uh, that's a lot. And City Council will move forward on this when, Sarah? Uh, they, their schedule is a little bit off because of school vacation week. So I believe this will be April. Uh, well, I don't know, actually, either April 27th, if they're meeting then, or May 4th. Okay. So we can all attend if we like to see how that how that goes. Um, moving right along, funding round debrief. As we always do at the end of a funding round, we have a quick go round to see uh, what works, what worked, what, what 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 did not work as well, and recommendations for approving deliberations and our committee meetings for the future. Is there any comments that folks have to make about this last round? Again, I would like to thank Jeff for stepping in and uh, taking taking the role of Julia for this for this round and helping us figure figure stuff out. Um, I think my only recommendation would be, you know, if there's any way we to, when we get into legal issues, such as the Forbes Library bathroom restoration stuff, um, before we begin voting to have clarity, perhaps, and something that confusing from the city solicitor, or from the uh, Community Preservation Coalition, or someone to, to help uh, guide us through perhaps a little earlier, that would have been helpful for me. Uh, any other comments, suggestions, Martha? Uh, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to say this, but Brian, I just again want to um, thank you so much for your leadership. Um, you just, you blow me away. You're such a fantastic chair. <laughs> and now I appreciate it so much. I think we all do. And um, all the, just the years you've given to the service of this, um, we're just so lucky to have you. And I want to thank you. Yes, I right love back, your sense of humor. Right back at you, committee members. But thank you, Martha. I really appreciate that. I really do. Any other comments? I just wanted to echo what Martha was going to say. And I, I think that uh, the process that we um, have evolved for doing the review um, has, has really, you know, we, we, we've streamlined it. We've gotten it to a place where it seems to work really well for us. Um, Certainly, it's been advantageous to have ample resources, but uh, I think we have a, I think we've de developed a, a methodology that that really works for us, and and uh, uh, we've all played a part, but but your leadership has been essential, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I got a long email from a Northampton resident about uh, who had sat in on one of our lengthy meetings. And, I, and I, I should have saved it to read a couple of, of lines, but one is, um, you seem to go over the same ground over and over and over again, but uh, I guess that's how the process worked, she wrote. So I thought that was sort of, and it was endearing and uh, we do do our due diligence and that's important. Any other funding round questions, comments? All right, moving right along. Um, tours, Sarah, what, what, what is that agenda item? So we discussed in the past ways to get the word out about CPC and, and 
CPA as a funding mechanism more generally and about um, project successes more specifically. And uh, a few years ago, we uh, people in City Hall had been thinking about a you know a, sort of a hidden downtown tour where people could go to check out places that you don't necessarily get to see um, day to day, like maybe this the area under the stage at the Academy of Music and some other locations like that. And that got me thinking about a, a way to get people to know about the CPA and showcase some of the more successful projects. And, and also for projects that are a little bit more challenged to get challenged to get people in to see them, like Smith Charities, for example, that could be a good way to, to set it up. That on one particular day, you know, some nice Saturday, maybe in the fall, people could go around and visit some of the CPA projects. So I just wanted to get everybody's thoughts on that. Uh, thoughts that people have? Seems like a great idea to me, but yeah, as long as we can publicize it somehow. So, so these would be, Sarah, you're envisioning sort of open houses at places. It wouldn't be a guided tour from one place to another. We're just, we'd expect staff from those organizations to be there. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have a fully formed idea. I just wanted to get everybody's thoughts about it. You know, maybe coordinate with Arts Night Out um, or do it on a Saturday where people could go around from one stop to another. Um, you know, I've, I've heard from previous uh, successful applicants that they really like to show off the work that the CPA has contributed to, but they don't necessarily have a way to do that if there aren't a lot of members of the public coming and going. Um, so you, there have been a, a lot of CPA projects that have happened over the years and they're very diverse and have a lot of different things going on. So it, it might be a good way to showcase that and also some potentially some other things downtown as well. Chris? I got too many darn hands up. Um, <laughs> I, I like the idea. I think um, I think realistically, uh, doing it as a standalone event is probably not going to yield a whole heck of a lot of of, of um, participation. But uh, if we could tie it to um, another uh, civic thing, it would be a great idea. And uh, I think the model that that might work would be akin to the. Um, uh, um, the library's uh, garden tour, where it's not a guided tour per se, but there's an identification of the sites that are available and people can self-guide and just check out the ones that they're interested in. Because um, that way, you know, people are not going to be necessarily particularly interested in, in everything, but there may they want to cherry pick some of the stuff that they'd like to see. Uh, but I think, you know, we have time to we have time to think about it. So and I appreciate you bringing it up, Sarah. I say, I also think it's a great idea. And Chris, I was thinking the same thing about the garden tour, where it's kind of, uh, you know, pick your own. There's a menu of places to go and being able to see the back of house of places. And then um, depending on the facility, somewhere like the academy you might have the architect and contractor, or, you know, they can kind of spruce it up to their to their liking and team members that could kind of speak to it. So I think it's a great idea. Okay. Sarah, you could you could start to think about this and in our first meeting, perhaps in the fall, come up with a more formal idea. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will I will have more for you for our first meeting. Um, and also about getting the word out about CPA. We used to have banners that said, thanks, Northampton, your CPA dollars at work. They either had disappeared or had gotten ragged over the years, but I did just order a few more. So you'll be seeing those. At least at the DAR house, they asked for one specifically, even though the work is interior, they really wanted everybody to know and they were incredibly grateful for the funds, but um, uh, probably other projects as well. Great. You know, I, I say this somewhat tongue in cheek, but not really. You know how you, when you visit national parks, you get your little passport stamp, I don't know if anyone's ever done that. And, uh, and kids can be little kid rangers and we could have kid CPCers who go to different projects, get your little CPC project stamp. Something to make it into a contest. I don't know if that's worth thinking about, but um, those with the most stamps get a something. I don't know, maybe not. 
But anyway, Sarah, you can come back to us first meeting with the proposal of how to formalize that for the yeah. late fall. Yep. Great. Right. Any other questions on that? Thank you for thinking of that, Sarah. Good to go. Uh, project reallocation updates, Sarah. Uh, just one of those, Grow Food Northampton had requested to shift the, just the location of some of their new garden plots and their edible hedgerow. Um, the, the quantity of it wouldn't change. It would actually be a little bit bigger, but doing some additional planning, they figured out that they were proposing things in a location that kind of floods and didn't really make sense. So I reviewed the, um, the reallocation guidelines in the plan, and that was clearly something that fit, but I just wanted to let everybody know. And the finances stay the same? Yes. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Anything else on, on that? Uh, two, I don't know. I don't remember if it was a separate agenda item, but two extensions. Historic Northampton um, didn't complete one of their projects. And they, they'd asked for some additional time to be able to do that. I just read the, the email that Lori Sanders had sent. Uh, so this was the, the preservation assessment grant. So this was funded three years ago and their contract will be expiring actually tomorrow. Um, so they'll be planning to submit a reimbursement request and more completely detailing their accomplishments um, later this spring, but they'll still have a balance of 18,500. And th those funds are earmarked for the preservation assessment of the Parsons house, which they do have scheduled, um, but they just like some additional time to be able to complete that. And I um, already processed a contract extension for the Florence National Register District nomination. And that was mostly just a delay in working with Mass Historic, but they, they've been steadily making progress on that. Is this some, are, are these uh, reallocations anything we need to approve or? No, so uh, the contracts are valid for a maximum of three years. That's as long as we can go without city council approval. So that's just a, you know, every every project is three years. So I'm just letting you know that um, new contracts will be issued for those, but you don't have to approve it. But city council does need to approve. They don't. Um, so it, every new every new three year contract is fine, but we we can't issue a contract to begin with for more than three years. Any other uh, questions for Sarah? All right, moving right along, summer, fall schedule. And I had no plans for that um, unless someone submits, submits an expedited request, in, in which case I'll let you all know. Uh, but I guess the only other item to discuss with that is whether people want to go back to meeting in person. The legislature did extend and the governor signed the um, pandemic era remote meeting options. So we could continue to meet uh, via Zoom if that works better for everyone. So Sarah, you don't anticipate a first meeting for the fall round until like the first Wednesday in October? Or something? Yeah, late September or early October would be the first meeting. Okay. So the question is, do we wanna go back in person? Boy, that seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Um, or do we want to continue on Zoom? Um, I saw Jen at the uh, CISA meeting last night. It was just so weird. I'd never seen Jen without just the face. And then there's an actual person. It's like, who are you? Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it, it is interesting to do that. What? How do people feel about going back to meeting in city council chambers? Some of us have never even met there. Um, before, uh, what what is people's preference? Stay on Zoom, go to city, go back live. Uh, a hybrid thing, or is anyone doing a hybrid thing, Sarah? Because it seems awkward uh, to me. Uh, uh, the, the planning board is, and I believe city council is moving towards that. Um, Claudia, you have a comment on that? I think we can ask for yeah. Yeah, that would be, I'm as a pub person in the public, I'm in favor of doing the open meeting or even the um, 
the the uh, what do you call it the hybrid meetings because it's so much easier to relate to people when you're sitting all together in a group so it's just somebody who wants to just listen in or be, feel like you're part of the group i would really love it if you went to live meetings thank you claudia brian i i would also weigh in and say that uh, i would strongly prefer to go back to being in person I could give an explanation for that, but or I could just be <laughs> there. I'm sure others disagree with me, but uh, that would be my own preference. Other folks? Um, I, I, yes, Sarah, do you have any sense? I, I, one of the things that I know has been, at least in my world, um, a benefit of the remote, um, the remote meetings is a lot more uh, public participation. Uh, from a more diverse audience. Um, and I just, do you have any sense from our last, I guess, three years of applications? Uh, you know, for example, the um, meeting that we have when we're accepting public comment, um, have those been, you know, more more participation about the same? What, what, could you, any sense of that at all? And all I have is anecdotal evidence and things that people have mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to relate one project to another because there were certainly times in the past where that the meeting room was packed full of people wanting True. to express support yeah. for the project. Yeah, I remember the community gardens um, at the state hospital yeah. site. The um, meeting went on to like midnight or something. And, yeah, yeah. But, you know, but other people have mentioned that, you know, as a member of the public, they prefer participating from home. It makes it easier for them with childcare, or right, right. Family, parents or other, work or other issues. So it, it goes both ways, depending on the individual okay. and their preference. Yeah. So that um, would be my only, I'm, I'm fine either way. Uh, I just would want to be sure that we're making a choice that will encourage the most uh, public involvement. Uh, Sarah, what are other committees doing? Uh, it varies pretty widely. So some of them are doing hybrid, as I mentioned. Some of them are still staying on Zoom. Um, I I don't know if any of them got, have gone back to fully in person without Zoom. Parks and Rec has been just in person the last two months. And, and Historic Commission is still uh, remote, and that's partly because I I'm not able to navigate very well at the moment. But we may go back soon to meeting together it live. Sarah, can you explain to us how hybrid works? Uh, so people, there's a couple different ways that people across the state are looking at it, but um, like what the planning board does is to allow people to type in comments and those will be read by the chair um, or they can participate during the public comment session that's established or they can just watch so there's different ways that, that that's done. Do other committee members have feelings about this? Um, Chris? Um, I'm reluctant to spend a lot of time in a crowded room. Uh, Jen? Well, this is a little bit of a spoiler alert, but um, for me in person is more challenging just because I'm a single parent and have a dog. Like I just, the, my care responsibilities make not being home more complicated. I don't have my son on Wednesday nights, so it is a little easier, but um, I am actually stepping down and will be replaced um, by Kevin from the Conservation Commission in a large part because since I've taken this role at CESTA in the last year, I am on Zoom and using my brain 40 hours a week and having two nights of meetings plus, again, single parenting has just been, um, I'm finding myself maxed out more than I would like to be. So I'm, I'm really, I wasn't gonna say anything because I'm still going back and forth because I love this committee and would love the capacity, like I would love to have another half of me, but so I hope to come back in a couple of years, but um, so that's, I, that's all to say, don't take my word one way or the other about in person or Zoom. Well, Jen, we will miss you uh, so much. And 
understand completely um, the issues of time and energy and brain power and all that stuff. But thank you so much for your work. And uh, um, we are sad to see you go, but happier at CISA doing, doing well in that, in that position. Let's see. And I truly hope to be back. I This has been such a delight and you guys are, it's just been so wonderful. And I've loved reading the proposals. Like I love this window into our city. Um, so again, I'm very reluctant about this decision and was not gonna say it because I'm still hemming and hawing, but um, we've already arranged it in the Conservation Commission. So I think it's very likely that that will happen by the fall. So we are losing Jeff, we're losing Jen. Um, it seems like, like Chris, uh, would prefer remote and Jonah would prefer in person and Martha's on the fence. Uh, I'm wondering if we should delay this. It, I'm wondering if it would be best to start off with, with another Zoom, the first meeting, and we have this conversation when we have a more cohesive committee. Does that make sense? Uh, since there'll be, there'll be two new people, not new, but Julia will be back. And then two people who are missing tonight. So that would be my recommendation. How does that fit with people? Yes. I think so that's wait. good, good, Brian. And but I also would just say that I think if there is even one member of this committee who is not comfortable being in a room with a lot of people for a few hours, then we should meet remotely. I just don't think that we should force the committee member to come to be in an uncomfortable situation. Um, if, particularly if you have, you know, health risks, or a family member does. Um, so that's just my opinion. But okay. and that's the that is kind of the um, the route we've taken on the historical commission so far. That's a, no. that's, that's great. Any other committee comments? Claudia, quick quick thing. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate. Uh, do you hear me? I appreciate yeah. these comments. I mean, the thing is that there are a lot of people in the public who don't have computers, who can't access this by Zoom either. So I hear Jen's you know, issue having a child and single parent and all that, but everyone has issues. And in a hybrid meeting, uh, I was at the city council meeting, I think last week, it's hybrid and some of the counselors were on Zoom. So it accommodates everybody. It's really an easy way to do everything. And, and just to reiterate that from, from my own point of view, I hate Zoom. I'm very uncomfortable doing it. It's not easy for me to, to do it. And, and I don't feel like I'm ever actually talking to anybody. I don't know where to direct my gaze. I don't know, you know, I'm just feeling completely dissociated from everyone. So when I went to city council chambers, there were about 10 of us there and it was like, right, this is a public meeting where actually people are sharing an experience together, you know, hearing the same thing, reacting together. It was, to I mean, I, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a boring meeting, but it was really great to be back in city council of chambers. So I would say there are a lot of things to be weighed. You know, I think it's a good idea to wait, but it's not just like everybody can zoom in that you'll get more people. To, you know, a lot of people are already excluded for some years because you are on Zoom. So that's that's my comment. Great. But, thank you, Chloe. Okay, so, thank you. So I think we're in agreement that we will um, revisit this issue in our first meeting in the end of September or October whenever it is. Uh, and we can clarify our opinions and hear more from committee members at that time. Uh, Sarah, anything else about summer or fall? So, so you would re we would reconvene if in fact there was a request for an expedited proposal, correct? Correct. Okay. And you don't anticipate it or you don't see right now any of those coming up? I, I haven't heard of anyone who's planning to submit anything at this point. Good. Uh, well, let certainly let us know. Uh, so any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Just one more follow-up question. Sorry to be a pain in the butt. Um, Sarah, refresh my memory on timing about um, replenishment of our of our of our budget. Uh, so it's reset essentially at the beginning of the next fiscal year. Um, but there is the funding can't be spent until the tax rate is established, which is um, earlier in the fall. So it, 
if a large expedited request came in like it did once before, the committee could make a recommendation and then hold that until that point. Great, thanks. Sarah, do you have how much money is uh, is being carried over from this fiscal year to the next? Uh, I do, hang on. After these recommendations, it'll be about 200,000. Somewhere around 200,000 carrying yeah. over. Yeah. And do we anticipate about the same amount of money this next fiscal year? Uh, not quite sure. So one interesting uh, thing that's come up is the um, increase in water and sewer rates. And that is causing a lot of people who hadn't been motivated to do so before to request CPA exemptions because the two are tied. So I, I don't know how many people hadn't, you know, did qualify for an exemption, but never requested it and may decide to do so at this point or, and what impact that might have. And that would lower our, the amount of money that is coming in. It would. I, and I, I don't have a handle at this point as to whether that would be a significant amount or not. Um, great. Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? So a once again, a thankful goodbye to Jet. Hope to see you. You promised to come back in a couple of years. Who was, who was your replacement? Kevin. Um, Sarah, remind me Kevin's last name. Lake. Uh, Lake. Yeah. Kevin Lake, who's the chair of the Conservation Commission and is wonderful and is very generously offering to take my spot. Great. Well, I'm staying on the Conservation Commission and okay. hope to sub back out again whenever Great. I feel a little less strapped. Well, again, thank you for your work. And Jeff, you're staying on rec the rec commission, is that right? Yep, that's correct. And we're already Great. talking about going back to the PC CPC for some funding so oh good well thank you for your work thank and you. have a wonderful rest of the spring and summer folks uh we will see you around town and then in the end of september early october